Okay, so hello. Today we will talk about solid. So for today, the plan is next. First, we we'll define what is the design principles, and then we will talk deeply about the solid, and then for uh, we'll talk about each of the design principles, which is the single responsibility principle, open calls principle, risk of substitution principle, interface segregation principle, and the last one, dependency injection principle. So let's start. So uh, first, before talking about solid, we need to define what is design principles. Design principles is kind of some set of guidelines that helps to make a good system design. So uh, then after the code is very easy to maintain, develop. Uh, and um, why do we need design principles? First, we need to uh, avoid badly designed classes because badly designed classes can lead us to the some problems. Second, we need to implement uh, implementing unneeded methods. So, for example, if we have some function, we can use the code that was already written. We don't need to write again that method or maybe um, we don't need to worry about the future requirements. We don't need to go ahead. We need to implement the method that is necessary right now. And adding new features. With using design principles, we don't need to worry about project, project structure. The term solid was coined by programming specialist Robert Martin, whose name is name, who also famous by name Uncle Bob. And uh, uh, SOLID is some acronym for set of practices for designing software code and building flexible and adaptable, adaptable program. So first we will start with the single responsibility principle. So single responsibility principle says that a class should have only one reason to change. So class should be responsible only for the one job. Um, so here I want to demonstrate to you the pre uh, single responsibility principle. So let's say that we create some class called movie where we'll store all the information about the movie. So movie has, um, for, of course, first name. First of all, it has a name, string name. Uh, all movies has director. Uh, then let's say that this movie has some kind of unique ID code. And then uh, let's say that it has some uh, duration. So length. And so on. And then uh, it has some kind of uh, like getters and setters to store all the information. So here we can um, we can create some getters and setters for each get lens get name <coughs> director and so on so let's say that it has other set of getters and setters uh, then uh, let's say that each movie has some kind of reviews where people write their opinions about the movie give some ratings and so on um, but the review can have very big structure um, reviews usually may contain some kind of uh, ratings, the people who wrote the review, when the review was written, and so on. So here, if we write all the way all the information about the review, our class can be very big, and in that case, our class can um, can be responsible not for one job, but for two jobs, where one job is to store information about the, about the movie, and second is to store information about the reviews about that movie. So that's why we need to create other class called 
let's call it review and here we can store all the uh, information and provide all the functionalities that is responsible for the review so first of all we can say that private int movie id uh, private author the person who wrote the review then we can write some ranking and then we can say some comments and then it has some here getters and setters so in this example uh, we follow single responsibility principle where each class is responsible for one job and we don't mix up many jobs into one class so this is a single responsibility principle second is called open close principle what does it say it says you should be able to extend a class without modifying so it is open for the extension but close for the modification so uh, in order to extend functionality we uh, need to add new code instead of changing existing one so we need to separate the behavior and uh, in that case our system will not be broken and easily extendable uh, so in uh, big systems we can use some packages libraries to uh, separate the functionalities and behavior and uh, functionalities should never change because if we change the code that code can lead to the some termination or some errors in other part of the code that's why it is more safe to just extend the code so now let's take a look on the example so for this principle let's say that we have a class called phone and in this class phone has um, like functionalities like string name of the phone then it can be model of the phone um, then brands of the phone and so on right, string camera for example so and then let's say that it has all this kind of uh, getters and setters and uh, <clears throat> after some time um, the, this class works fine and people love to use this class but after some time comp company decided to add some new functionalities or make this phone even better so uh, better way to improve this phone would be not to change the code inside of the phone because uh, if we change something inside this phone uh, other parts of the code that is also dependent on this class can be broken so it would be much safer better way is to just extend this class so we just create some class called phone upgrade and this class just extends the class phone and um, let's say that this phone upgrade can um, can go into the water and cannot be broken so like it has new functionality like private string under water so uh, by this functionality we can improve our phone and at the same time we don't uh, change the code and uh, as a result we cannot like affect other parts of the code so next is called Liskov's substitution principle Liskov's substitution principle uh, sometimes is uh, it can be um, it can be accepted as one of the 
challenging part to understand. So what does it say? Drive class must be substitutable for the base class without customer knowing. So in other words, uh, the drive class or subclass should be able to change or replace the base class so even the customer no, don't know about that. So here it says that let fx be a property probable about projects of x of type t. So uh, as example, I can provide you the code when um, we create some interface and some class implements that interface. So now let's take a look on the example. For this example, I'm gonna create class called, uh, interface called car. And uh, the common thing for all cars is that we can turn on the engine and uh, we can accelerate. So we, I'm gonna create two methods. So first method is just void turn on engine and second method is accelerate then i'm gonna create class called um, motor car and this motor car just implements interface car And second method is accelerate. And yeah. accelerate on the car. So uh, this class can be easily um, this class can easily replace the base class, which is a car. And uh, why do we need that? We can just also, um, let's say that after some time, the electric cars is used widely and we can just replace uh, this car with other class. So let's say that we have electric car implements car and overwrite and let's say public void turn on engine but the electric cars they don't have uh, engine and accelerate So both classes, they implement the interface, the base um, class car, and uh, these both classes, like a motor car and electric car, they can replace this car. And uh, for the from the custom customer point of view, uh, the customer even may not notice that car interface doesn't exist. So this is a list of substitution principle. So um, in a short, every part uh, part of the code should be expected to result whatever class instance is sent. So um, each part of the code of this class, like a motor car and electric car, they are uh, used to uh, implement the things that was expected uh, that uh, in this interface. So uh, why do we need list of substitution principle? Uh, it's necessary to build software systems that are interchangeable between uh, between between them. So uh, we can build different 
systems and the parts of this software systems can be interchangeable. Next is called interface segregation principle. So uh, this interface segregation principle says that we need to make fine-grained grained interfaces with specific methods. Um, a client should be never forced to implement an interface that it doesn't use or clients shouldn't be forced to depend on the methods they don't use. A client should never depend on anything more than the method which is used. Changing a method shouldn't affect on unrelated class. And fat interfaces should be changed to several small specific ones. So as an example, I can provide you uh, next code. So let's create some interface called athlete. And uh, this cloud interface athlete has the next, uh, let's say, methods. Void compete, void uh, long jump, uh, void short jump, void run. And um, Athlete is uh, some sportsman that, let's say, participates in, in Olympic Games. And uh, let's say that we have some uh, real athlete. So let's call it Cristiano Ronaldo. And uh, here, if we implement the class athlete, Um, this class Christian Ronald need to implement all these four methods like a compete, long jump, short jump and run but um, this long jump, short jump can be not related to the uh, specifics or to the sports that this class is belongs to so this class belongs to the like for the football and uh, long jump and uh, short jump then they're, they're not um, related to this class this run can be related and compete can be related but not these two methods that's why we need to create different classes different interfaces uh, where each interface is responsible for more specific classes so we can just create another class for example uh, long not class, but interface, long jumper. And this um, interface extends athlete. And we can just say long jump. Then we can just remove it. <coughs> then we can create another interface. Let's call it short jumper and extends at least short jumper. And here we can remove it. Then we can uh, create another interface. Let's call it food footballer. And here this interface implement, um, has a run. And here we can just remove. And the compete is a uh, uh, common thing for all athletes where in all um, sports uh, people like compete with, with each other. So that's why we can just leave this compete in this athlete that is common for all uh, sportsmen. And here in uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, we can just extend implement footballer, and we can need to first of all compete, and uh, we can just do something like let's call it. Uh, compete for champions and then run yeah. 
probably cool. Run. And uh, run for ball. So, and um, if you want to create other class uh, that is specific for the long jumper, we can just create the class and then implement not athlete but long jumper. And the, uh, the method that we implement on that long jumper would be specific to only long jumper. And we don't need to implement all other methods like a short jumper or run and so on. So this is the interface segregation principle. Also, it says fat interfaces should be changed to several small ones. So um, initially, athlete had the methods uh, run, short jump, long jump, and so on. But after segregation, we made our fat interface. Uh, we converted our fat interface into smaller interfaces. And next principle is called dependency inversion principle. So we, this principle says that we need to depend on abstractions, not on concretions. So we, um, the high level model must not depend on low level model. And uh, our uh, high level model should depend on abstractions. So here as abstraction, we can provide uh, like interface or abstract classes where we don't need to implement the methods. But the concrete classes uh, that depend on this abstraction, they should implement. But uh, if we have some concrete class, then uh, our dependency inversion principle wouldn't be wouldn't work. And uh, if we apply dependency inversion principle, it would be possible to change implementation easily without altering high level code. And the code that implements high-level policy shouldn't depend on the code that implements low-level details. And uh, it should be depend on the policies. So as an example, I can provide the next code. So for dependency inversion principle, let's take a look on the next code. So here I'm going to create two classes. First one is back and developer. Oh, sorry, so back and developer and <clears throat> front end developer. So, back end developer, they write the code in a Java or it can be PHP. So, for here, let's write, write Java code. And here let's writing the code. Then for the front end developer, let's say that uh, sorry, it should be so Java code should be here for the back end developer. And for the front end developer, uh, front end developers write the code in a JavaScript. Java script. Write code in Java script. Then let's say that we have class called project. And here we create two uh, two objects of the backend developer and front end developer. So let's make it private backend developer and front end developer new front end developer then in a project we say that backend developer uh, write java code and front end developer writes run JavaScript. Okay. So, uh, but let's imagine that we have many developers, like in one project. 
in bit projects we can have 30 40 developers working on different parts of the code and uh, for each developer we need to write this code many times but in the short if we take a look overall they developing something so but they developing in different ways and uh, in order to better organize our code we can just create some class called develop developer for example let's call it let's make it interface developer and this developer has the method called develop and then we can just create here uh, implements developer and here we can just override public void develop and then just call this method here same thing we do for the front-end developer implements developer and override from yeah, public void develop run JavaScript code and then we go to the project and instead of creating different object, objects for each of the class we can just here for example define one common structure so let's make private list developer developer list and here uh, let's create some parameterized constructor list developer developer list And here, this developer list is equal to developer list. And then we can just run our, like, launch the code, run the developers. So it can be public, what, run, or let's say involve developers. And here we can say developer current developer and developer list and here we can just say current developer develop so here um, if we have if we would have 30 or 40 developers and if we wouldn't use some abstract interface then we would need to write uh, the like write java code or write javascript code 30 or 40 times but because we have created some abstract interface we can just write this code and this code will run like uh, the code for 30 and 40 developers which is quite uh, which makes our code less and easy readable and more optimized so that's it for today for the reading please open this book book clean architecture by robert martin part 3 chapter 7 to 11 so that's it thank you for watching bye